Okay, hi, uh, welcome. Um, in this video, um, I'm just going to hit some of the, what I think are the most important points from um, our uh, tech book we're using, our Malik tech book, um, on um, defining functions and using functions in C++. So, uh, in particular, I'm just going to talk about uh, just a few things, so I'm going to keep these videos short for this class. Um, we looked a little bit at using some predefined functions, so from libraries, uh, from the CMath library, and I've got an example from the random library here. Uh, and then we're going to talk, I'm going to talk a little bit about defining and calling value re returning functions, uh, and then the difference between value parameters and reference parameters in functions in C++. Um, and then a little bit about a variable or, or identifier scope, so global versus local and name constants and things like that. Okay, so, um, um, uh, I, I will post this, this file that I'm using, this example file with all these examples um, with this video um, on our learning management system. So let me just go down here and, and start down to the main function here. Oh, and, and by the way, uh, hopefully you watched my previous video. Uh, basically, I'm using Visual Studio 2017 here, um, and I'm going to keep my, make my, pers my terminal persist by just putting a breakpoint here at the last statement of my main function so that uh, when I run, it'll stop there and I'll still be able to see the terminal output, okay? Okay, so let's first talk about um, um, uh, predefined functions, okay? So uh, we often want to use functions, uh, you know, we don't want to write everything ourselves. We want to reuse functions, and there's, there's lots of, of existing uh, libraries of functions out there, so. Um, our textbook shows a few examples from the C math and from the, the CC type for doing some things with character string and character array. So, so I'll just give some examples of these. But this is the first thing about using a function. So in order to use a function, you have to know um, um, the name of the function and how to call it. Um, so so here, here's a, an example of using the, ab, the absolute value function, so the abs function from um, uh, standard lib dot h. Okay, so to use the the or sorry, this should be from um, CMath. Um, so uh, anyway, in order to use this function, you have to include the the right header. So to use uh, uh, other functions, you have to do include. So if you look at the top of this example file that I have, I include a couple of things: the IO stream in order to give IO stream output. So really, things like C out and things like that are actually functions or classes that I'm using that other people have written, the CMath and the, the C standard lib for the RAND functions here. So, um, so back to the um, absolute value function. Um, so what it does, the absolute value function takes a single parameter, a double, as a value, uh, and it returns a double value as the result, okay? So if I call abs right here, like this, um, and I give it a, a double, so I declare a variable called neg value, and so it only takes a single parameter, I give it that, um, and then notice I'm directly using the return value from abs and just sending that to my output, to my output stream, okay? So if I actually build this, um, and then run it. Um, I'll start my build off here. I should build with success, okay? And then I'll run it, F5, or run in debugger mode. So we should see over the very first line of output um, is from that line about the. Um, um, Sorry, but the screen's a little small. I'll be moving around stuff in here. Sorry about that. Let me get back to the point. So, so we're looking at this line of output here. Um, so the absolute value, and then call, from calling the absolute function, changes it from a negative to a positive, right? Okay. So anyway, that's just an example of how you call or use a function. Okay. So this function called abs, abs for absolute value, takes a single double parameter as its input, and it returns a double as, a, as its um, output. And I just sent the, the output, the double output, the, the standard output um, in order to see this positive 3.14159, okay? So, so notice we, we passed the return value from the function directly to the output. So in our textbook, um, it said that, I mean, it's natural to use um, the, the value like that as output, you know, so sending as output, or other ways we might use it, use it as, a, as, a, as a value in a calculation, or we might save the, the, resu the, the resulting value in a variable, for example. 
So here's an example of saving the value um, in a variable. So we call absolute, again, with the same negative value, 3.1415, negative 3.14159. And we save that into a new variable called abs value, okay? So then if you look at this, this next line of output, the absolute value is abs value. Uh, we get that. So again, you see it's, it's the same thing. We call it abs the second time. So this is an example of assigning the return value to a new variable. Um, and then you can use you can use function return values inside of calculations just like you'd use like a constant, okay? So instead of writing a statement like um, um, area equals 3.14159 times um, the, 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 the radius radius squared like that. So these are equivalents. So, so here, I'm actually doing two things. You know, so I'm using the function abs of negative value, and that returns the resulting double. So that's going to be positive 3.141 minus. And then I take that and multiply it times the return result from, the, from raising my radius to the power of, of 2, so squaring the radius. Um, and, and then we save the result of that calculation again to a new variable called area. And then we output that result. So we get the, the area of our circle of radius 3 is 28.27. Okay, in that case. All right, so that's, that's, that's just the fundamental way that you actually use a function, okay? So, um, but, you know, so, so you really should reuse functions whenever you can. You know, you use the, the, the standard C library functions. But uh, not everything that you want to do is going to be already available as a function. So one of the most fundamental skills you can do in learning to program um, is, is learning to write your own uh, functions. But it's more than that. It's, it's, uh, the bigger picture is that writing functions is all about taking big problems that are really hard to solve, breaking those down into smaller manageable pieces, and then hopefully the, the small pieces you get small enough that you can directly write a function um, to, to solve that little problem. And then you combine all your little functions together to solve the, the bigger original problem. So, I mean, that's really the fundamental part about functional decomposition and programming, okay? So, anyway, I mean, in order to do that, in order to actually solve big problems like that, you have to learn to be able to write functions. So, to write your own, what our textbook calls user-defined functions, we have to have these four pieces of information. We have to uh, have a come up with some name for it, okay? So um, always try to come up with good, meaningful names for functions and for variables, okay? So one thing I forgot to mention, for these videos, when I give you these example um, uh, code that I use, um, I'm going to conform to the style guidelines that I want you to use for the class. And one of the things that I want you to try to learn to do is to give meaningful names to functions and variables, okay? So but anyway, so the first step of, of a function is give it a name. Then you have to define what the inputs are to the function. So a function of programming language is like a, a mathematical function. It has one or more inputs, uh, what we call parameters. Uh, so we determine which parameters, which inputs we're going to give, and then the types of those parameters. So C and C++ is a typed-based language. We have to, to uh, declare what the type of every variable and every parameter is, whether it's a double or a float or whatever. Uh, and then, uh, usually the most useful types of functions are value returning functions. So a function in C++ can only return one single value. So, uh, and you can't have functions that don't return anything. Those are no, known as void functions. But if the function does return a value, you have to determine the, the type again. You know, so maybe it's, it's returning a double or something like that. Um, and then there's a fifth thing to, to uh, those four things define the, the signature of the function, or also known as the function prototype. Uh, but the fifth thing, of course, is to actually implement the function. So you actually have to write the code to do what the function, what, what you want the function to do. So, um, so as a quick example of a function of a user-defined function, uh, the textbook, the Malik textbook, redefines the absolute value function first of all. So uh, redefines the absolute value function, but to, to work on um, integers instead of floats. I can see I made some uh, uh, I made a, a mistake in my code here. So I, uh, I wanted to define an integer negative 2 and assign that to negative int. Um, and then we're going to call abs again. But in this case, I've got another function named. Uh, this is an example of function overloading, actually. I'm not going to really talk about that. You should read the textbook about function overloading. But um, I've got another function. But this function takes integers instead of floats. Okay. 
So, um, well, if you look above main in my example um, code, you can look at the definition for abs. So, uh, so again, uh, another hint about style guidelines. All functions that you write for my class in, in general, um, whenever you're writing code, you should give a little function header. So you basically should, at a minimum, describe the function, describe every input to the function and its type, if, if it's a type language, um, and then describe the return value, if it's a value returning function. So here, the abs function takes a single parameter of type integer as input that I'm going to call number, and it returns an integer as its result. And then this is the code of the function, that fifth step. Okay. So the absolute value is simply if it's less than zero, we just negate it. So we return the negative, the negative number that makes it positive. Otherwise, you just return the number. Right? So every value returning function has to have a return statement. Okay? So um, it's, it's uh, a problem if you don't have a return statement, if you don't hit a return statement for a value returning function. Okay? Um, so yeah, back to down here in my main function where I call my version of abs. Um, for the, in the integer version, here it is. So uh, we see that, that the function works again. So th this line of, um, of output on the text, uh, uh, on the terminal where it says the absolute value using my function is of that looks like this. Um, so right here, the absolute value of using my function on negative two is two. So hopefully it's working. I didn't test it completely, so I didn't check it with a positive number. So another quick hint, you know, I should always try and test all your possible kind of use cases of a function. So, I mean, I don't know if this function is working correctly, if I give it a positive number or not. It might not, so, but anyway. Um, another quick example of using uh, my own uh, function that I define, uh, and also another example of using uh, um, a library function. Um, so, Here's an example function I, I, I define in this uh, example code, code called row x sided dice n times. So the purpose of this function is you're supposed to give it two parameters. These are integer parameters. The first parameter s says the, the, the size of the dice. So if I want to roll a regular six sided dice, my first parameter should be six. Right? If I wanted to roll like a d20 and playing Dungeons and Dragons, I could pass in um, 20. and I could roll just a single 20-sided die. So the second parameter for this uh, function um, is um, is the number of dice to roll. And what this function does, it doesn't return just the, the result of rolling a single dice at random. It, re it, it rolls uh, in number of dice. So in, in the first example, it would roll two six-sided dice, like playing a game of craps, and it would sum those up and just return the sum of those. So, but in my second example, if I do this, it's going to roll one d20, and just since it's summing just one value, it's just like rolling a single uh, d20. So, let me let me change the the code and recompile it here. So, um, so rolling a d20, I got a this 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 result. All right. Oh, uh, yeah. Another hint. Yeah. So if you want to recompile, you have to stop the debugger. So it's often easy to forget that I, I hadn't actually exited out my debugger before. But uh, nowadays, Microsoft Visual Studio helpfully reminds you, and you can just say yes, I want to stop it, and then it will do the compile for you. So, um, and then yeah, let me rerun that five or, or run the debugger there. So again, um, it hit my breakpoint at the end, but it popped it down. So, um, 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 yeah, when it hits the when it hits the deep when it hits the breakpoint, it goes down to where the breakpoint is. I gotta find uh, my place in the code again here. So, um, oh. Um, uh, yeah, I kind of messed up my example here. So, so now all I'm doing is rolling a d20 uh, 10 times inside of this loop here. I, I meant to do that uh, uh, above there. 
So yeah, on the output you'll see that, that it rolled a d20, blah, 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 like that. Uh, wait, I'll come back. Actually, you know, I'll give, I'll give you the example. You can look at the original as I had for rolling um, a craft game. So let's look at the rolling excited dice in times function here real quickly. Um, oh, um, um, I also gave a, a demonstration of function prototype. So if you look in the example code that I gave, um, the, the, the actual definition for the function roll excited dice in time is below the main function. So you have to go to the bottom of the file, okay? So um, if you just tried to run, if you tried to compile this code where the, where the call for the function is before the actual definition of the function, you would actually get an error, okay? So let me, let me remove, at the top you'll see uh, what's known as the function prototype. Let me comment that out. So if I was to comment that out, so now uh, I'm calling the function in main um, uh, here twice, but I don't define the function until after main, okay? Now if I try to compile it, it's going to give me an error. Uh, stop the debugger again. It'll give me an error that um, the, 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 it can't, the, this function is undefined, right? So, so this error here that... Uh, uh, this is undefined, okay? So, uh, I mean, there's either two ways you can get around that in C++. You can either put the definition of the function before you actually use it. So that's what I did for the abs function that I just did here that took an integer. Or you can use function prototypes. I usually prefer just to put the function before it if you can. I mean, that's not always possible. If you have a function A that references function B, and the, but then B calls A, you can't have both of them first. So you have, to, you have to use function prototypes in that case. But that's an example of recursion. We're going to be talking about that in a couple of weeks. Okay? But uh, the, the, usually the main reason why you use function prototypes in C is uh, you want to, you're creating a library, but you're going to def put your function prototypes in a header file. So then if other people want to use your, your defined functions, they only have to include the header file. But then you put the actual definition of the, of the functions in a different file, okay? But uh, anyway, that, anyway that, that's real quickly kind of what function prototypes are meant to, to do. Uh, but here, so we can fix this error again by defining the function prototype before uh, we actually call the function. So again, this doesn't actually define how the function works. It just gives the signature of the function, which parameters and the types of the parameters are input, the name of the function, and the type of the return value for the function, okay? So um, let's save that and rebuild it. Um, and now the, the, uh, the code shouldn't run again. Um, so we're getting with our D20 output again here. Uh, and then I haven't really even shown the, 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 the function here. See if I get it all on the screen here. So yeah, here's the whole roll excited dice in time, okay? So again, you know, always define your uh, get, document your parameter input parameters and return value. Um, so all we're doing here, we're using, uh, and, and I'm using this is an example of using another um, uh, predefined function. So I'm using the rand function. The rand function returns a random integer in the range from zero up to a really big number. And then, it, but if I take that in, and do a, a, a modulus division, so by the number of sides, if I'm going to do six-sided dice, the number of sides would be six. So doing mod six will give the remainder, will give the value from zero to five, and then if I add one to that, the result is some random number from one to six for a six-sided dice. Or if I pass in 20 for number of sides, uh, I'll get a, ran, a really big random number, the remainder will be some number from zero to 19, you add one to that. And it's like getting a random dice, a d20, from 1 to 20. That's your dice roll. And then the loop just does that number of times and sums that up and returns the sum. So that's your roll excited dice in times basic function. So you can do like uh, uh, simulate uh, playing a game of craps, which, which is what I had um, in this example code. Or you can do play Dungeons and Dragons where you have to uh, roll two, you know, uh, four d4s and get the result, that kind of thing. Will function like that. All right. Let me get back up here. Um, so I think that's yeah. So that that is the the basics of defining a function, defining the parameters of a function, and using a function. Okay. Um, so our, the the next topic that I had in there that I wanted to kind of uh, just mention one or two things about was the difference between value parameters versus reference parameters. All right. 
So uh, by default, uh, everything I've done so far, we've been using value parameters. So if you don't do anything to a parameter in C++, it's, it's, it's passed by value. So uh, what you have to, to know or think about that is that a value parameter are parameters where, the, where a copy of the value is passed to the function. So when I use a value parameter, I'm making a copy of the value, giving it to the function. So then if, if the function changes that value in the function, it has no effect on me, the caller, okay? So, so I'm just making, so anything that, that the function does to that, para that value parameter um, only does something on the copy of that value that was given to it, not to my original value in the parameter. So it's safe to, to modify copy uh, value parameters inside of functions, okay? So, um, so, so, so just a, as a quick example of that. So if I have, I have a function in this file called change the value parameter, where I, I give it three parameters, two integers and a double. The, the original values of the parameter in my main function, when I call it, were 5, 7, and 9.9, .9, okay? Now, if, if you look at the definition of change the value parameters function, um, this is at the top again, after um, abs, all this function does is it takes these three parameters and it actually modifies the value. So it changes the first integer parameter to 99, the second one to 88, and the third one to 77.77. This is an example of a void function, so it doesn't return any value. Right? So there's no return statement in this case. So it's just assigning the, the passed in values to, assigning new values to the passed in parameters. Okay? But what you'll see then, um, if you look at um, the result, if you, have, if you print out the values of val parameter 1, 2, and 3, after calling change the value parameters, um, the, the, that result is right here on the line. So remember, uh, the original values were 5, 7, and 9, 9.9, 9, and I changed those in the function, but then when you print it out afterwards, you still get the values 5, 7, and 9.9. .9, okay? So it only changed the, the copy of the values in the change value parameters function. It didn't change my actual uh, variables, okay? So that's, that's the normal way that you pass in parameters to functions, okay? You don't, don't want to uh, affect the caller. But reference parameters can be useful for two reasons. Number one um, is, um, uh, well, the, the main reason, and this is kind of an example of this. So if I need to return two results from a function, so if I, if I need to be able to pass make a change to these ref these parameters and return that back to the caller, I can use reference parameters, okay? So in this case, we I define a second function called change with the reference parameters, where I pass a character and a Boolean uh, parameter in. But if you look at change the parameters again at the top here, change the, uh, the, the reference parameters. So notice the, the way you define something to be passed in by reference in C++ is you use this little ampersand sign. So after the, the, the variable type, the parameter type, say ampersand, that changes it to be a reference parameter instead of a value parameter, okay? So I'm passing in this, this, a reference to a character parameter and a reference to a Boolean parameter. And I'm changing them again. So I change the, the, the character parameter to be Y, and I change the Boolean parameter to be false. So um, again, if we go back, back down here to main, um, yeah, so originally the values were x and true, but I changed those to y and false. So if you look at the output from running that, the call to change the reference parameter, indeed you do see that reference parameter 1 is now y, um, and reference parameter 2, the boolean, is now false. Okay? All right. Oh, and then notice another thing, I mean, it doesn't matter if the names were different. So I call it reference parameter 1 inside my main function, but I just call it simply Param one and param two, it, when I define the function, okay. So a reference parameter is really like an alias. Um, so it, it's uh, another name for the for the, the the variable, but it is the same variable. And if I change it um, in the the function, uh, I will see any changes to that um, from in the caller after I return from the function, okay. So that that's a good use for reference parameters, all right. Um, and, and yeah, it's nonsensical to change constants. So like if I tried to, to, to pass a constant to a function that was expecting a reference parameter like z or false, if you compile that, you should get uh, um, a compiler error. Let me stop the compiler. Let me stop the debugger error this time by hand. Um, we rebuild after I um, uncomment that.
So I actually, the, your edit, the, the Visual Studio editor already recognized that I'm um, trying to do something wrong. That's what the little squigglies mean here. So initial value of reference to non const So that means that, um, um, yeah, again, you know, these, these error messages can sometimes be hard to understand what they mean, but it's trying to tell me um, that I'm trying to pass a, uh, a, a constant um, to a non, to, to a reference parameter here. Again, so that's what's happening. Um, all right, and then finally, um, let me, let me you know, just rebuild that, make sure that it builds after I comment that back in again. Always, never, never make more than three or four changes without testing that your code is still compiling, okay? Another quick hint. I never make more than a few changes, a couple changes to a couple of lines of code without going back and make certain my, my file is still compiling and running. Uh, the last thing real quickly I'll talk about is scope. It's another important concept to make certain that you master. Uh, I mean, not just all, all of these, these concepts uh, you'll find in, in, in all, almost all programming languages. So this isn't just particular to C++. Defining your own functions and the scope of variables and passing by reference or value. You can do all the same things in Java or, or Python or whatever. So um, Anyway, so Variables, whenever you define them, are, um, are local to the scope that they're defined in. So if I declare a variable inside of my main function, it's local to that scope, okay? Um, and something you might not have known, but whenever you're doing these curly braces, what you're really defining is a new scope. Uh, so that's a new namespace, a new smaller namespace that has its own set of variables that are different from the from any other namespace, including uh, the, the namespace, the, the, the scope that's defined in. So, so, I mean, you know, so I have a set of curly braces, and it's not even part of like an if statement or anything like that, but this is just a new scope, but I use the same variable name, but this variable inside of this inner scope is, is different than the one in the outer scope. So if I run this, oop, hit the wrong button, F5, um, you'll see that the um, output message, uh, the first one comes from the inner scope where the value of this variable with the same name was 42. Um, so in the inner scope, see the value is 42. And then when we're done with that scope, that variable goes away and, and, and now we're back to the, the, the scope, the, the namespace where we have this, uh, it's a completely different variable called example of variable scope, uh, but now its value is five. So now if you go back to that, you see its value is five, all right? So that's the scope. Scope, I mean, every time you have curly braces, that's a new scope. So every function is its own scope. So whenever you pass a parameter into a function, if you don't pass it by reference, it, it's, it's a different, uh, it's a different uh, um, variable or value. Uh, the, and, and kind of the, the result about the, the, the thing about that then is if you, if you define like a variable at the top of the file outside of any parentheses, so at the very top here you'll see um, I've got a, uh, something called my global variable, 42. So if I, I define a ver just a regular variable, but it's, it's, it's not inside of a function, it's just uh, at the top of my file here. That's global. So every, every function inside of this file uh, can reference my global variable, uh, including my main function or any other function. Okay, so um, so yeah, here. So as I say, generally you should avoid that. So uh, global variables are bad. I might talk about that later. Why? But you really should not use global variables if you can avoid it. Um, so, but 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 here we are using my global variable, and when you print that out. Uh, the global variable name, name my global is 42. It's getting that from the global scope, from, from the top of the file, okay? Uh, so, although uh, global uh, variables uh, should be avoided, uh, avoided uh, named constants, named global constants are often very use, useful, okay? And maybe, again, at another time, maybe I'll say why that is. But um, um, at the top, again, at the top of the file, I had two examples of named constants. So if you have a value that you need to use over and over in a file, don't scatter magic numbers throughout your file. Create, if you use a value more than once uh, in, a, in a file or in a program, create a named constant and then use that named constant. It, it makes your programs more readable 
um, and it makes them less error prone. You know, so if I have to change the value of pi, uh, I only change it in this one spot instead of having to, to search for that value everywhere. Uh, and, and change it. If I miss one of those and don't change it, my program has a bug now. So it's not, it's not, uh, I don't have the right value of pi everywhere. All right. So anyway, these are two named constants, pi and e. So again, they look like the global variable. So we can, we can display value pi is pi from the, the named global constant. And the value of e, Euler's constant, is e. Um, um, the pi is 3 value of Euler's constant is uh, um, 2. Oh, sorry. Um, so that was a bug there. The, the value of, of the Euler's constant should have been... Uh, the, both of those were bugs. So I, Okay, so here's an example of... Uh, where data type, the, the type of, of my data um, is important. So I define those as constant ints. It's not what I meant. Double. I need to fix that in, before I put the post the file. <coughs> excuse me on um, um, uh, on my Leo online. So I, me I meant constant doubles because um, it was supposed to be double values. So let me recompile that. Stop the debugger. And uh, rerun that. And that's better. The value of pi is 3.1415, and the value of e is 2.7128. Alright. Um, so, then there's the last, I mean, the other thing about, again, they, they help you uh, uh, avoid bugs, you know, so. If you try and change the value of a constant, I mean, it's an error. So, so uh, things that are constant mean that you can't change them. You, you've told the compiler this value should never change, okay? So that, uh, um, well, we'll see use other uses of constant later. So if I change, if I try and modify a, a constant like E um, and uh, rebuild uh, the source file, it should, uh, I mean, already, again, the, the editor has detected that, uh, but you'll get uh, E is, uh, can't assign a value to a constant here. Um, okay, so uh, just to summarize, um, so make certain that you know that fu functions are fundamental to programming. So make certain that you know how to use functions that are defined for you in libraries, uh, but also especially make certain that you that you know how to, to define your own functions um, and, and and practice uh, using breaking big problems up into smaller problems, small enough that you can you can uh, code as a single function. Okay? Know the difference between value parameters and reference parameters, um, and, and understand in general this idea about scope and how variables work, and the difference between globals versus local um, variables. Okay, thanks for watching. That's it uh, for this video. Um, I will uh, see you.